Hi folks, let's model up these tri mics in Fusion 360. So today we're going to do a basic tutorial, just the basic shape of these one joint, some good fundamentals getting started. But then next week, let's try going bananas. Let's model up as much of this as we can and go crazy, go into the details and let's see where we get stuck. Welcome to our Fusion Friday. We're going to do two components. We're going to do this knob and then we're going to treat the rest of this as if it's one component. It's not. Next week we'll get into more detail on that. But I'm actually going to start with a piece of paper. I've been doing this more lately and it's really helpful. We've got this shape here. Let's draw that out roughly. And I'm going to draw it on the radius, meaning up, over, a little bit of an angle, pitches up, pitches down, and then that comes to a sharp point right here so and this is a terrible drawing it doesn't matter so the idea is that is half of this shape the other half is this body so I'm gonna say it goes over to well it doesn't I'm gonna say it comes over so that's that area it comes down angle back up there's a little joint right there. That seam comes over, radius is up, over there, and back. Yes, it's terrible, but you don't have to be a good drawer to have something like this that can really help as you move into CAD. In Fusion, I've got a new file. First thing I'm going to do is save it. I call it Try Mic. Right click on the file name, new component. And I'm going to call it the cap, whatever you want to call the uh, top section here. I'm also going to create my component, right click here, new component, body. We're going to start with this guy. So I'm going to activate that component. Hit L for line. And I'm going to sketch on this plane right here. Now notice how my didn't automatically orient to that. I have a setting, preferences, the top right here, under design, auto look at sketch. I turned it off. Sometimes I like to start my sketch, especially once we've got the part modeled up and not have it automatically rotate and move uh, the, the plane. So we're gonna start by sketching this up here in this rough profile. It is helpful to start with that dimension. So that's giving me 339, so it'll be 0 0.339 divided by 2, because we're working off the radius. Show my origin real quick, L for line again. Click here, click up, and then I'll click the little green check or just hit escape. So D for dimension, I'm going to dimension this, 0.339 divided by 2. There is a way you can sketch with I think, what do they call it, the diameter or radius mode. I, I'm not a fan of it, so I'm not going to show it. Now I don't really care about the dimensions yet. I'm going to go ahead and rough out the rest of this shape. L for line, over, at an angle, at an angle, at an angle, come back. And if I come over here, let it snap, it picks up that joint so I keep that at a right angle. So we've got that rough shape. Now we can start adding some measurements. If you're not getting black lines as you start to fully constrain things, go up to your name, preferences, preview and make sure sketch is checked. I want black lines because it tells me it's fully constrained. So the only le line that's left is blue is this guy. So if I click on it and start dragging it, I can see where it's not constrained. And this is sort of an arbitrary dimension for what we're doing today because it's basically how hollow or how deep is that cavity inside of there. I'm not too worried about it today. So I'm just going to dimension it. Uh, 1.0333. S pops up this Search box, R-E-V, for revolve. 
What's the profile? This angle around this. Click OK. Boom. We've got our cap. Oop, the only thing I don't like is that angle there. That's too steep. Let's go edit that. Something like that. Perfect. Save. Switch to the body. Same thing. We're going to dimension our first line here, and then we're going to do an L for line and trace out this rough shape, come back and add dimensions to it. I'm going to turn off the cap light bulb. I don't want to see it. Activate my body. L for line. I'll click on that plane. Sketch up. Sketch up. And what is that? 814 divided by 2. 0.814 divided by 2. L for line. We'll come over, down at an angle, over, back up, over, up. And same thing, if I hover, if I move my mouse over to the center, I can kind of snap to that point, and then when I come back, it'll let it lock in. Click OK. D for dimension, and let's start dimensioning. Click on select. Everything is black. Sometimes I like to tug around just to make sure there's nothing else that's missing. And now we're not doing precise, precise picking up of the measurements here. The idea is how we model stuff for, from fusion. Uh, we could spend a lot more time talking about how you pick up certain measurements. Let's do S revolve. Click here. What's my axis? Same point. Click OK. Turn my cat back on. Activate the parent. So now, last thing we got to do, I should do a couple of things. We need to fix this joint so these two function together. And then let's add the tri mic lobes down here on the bottom. J for joint. So it says com some components have been moved. That's because I dragged this cap over here. I don't care about having done that. So I'm going to just click continue because I don't want to actually capture that as a position to save parametrically where I could refer to it later. Continue. Revolute is what I want. I'm going to turn off. Let's see here, what do I want to do? Let me click cancel, actually. The way we want to do joints is the cling that we click revolves around the other thing. So the way I would think about using this tool is I would hold this tool steady, and I would turn this, which means this is quote-unquote solid, and this moves. So that what we're going to do, right-click on the body, ground. So it's now locked in place. I can still move this thing. I'll hit revert to go back. So now I can hit J for joint. I'm going to hide the body. I click the thing first that moves or is slaved to the second thing. So uh, what's the component? That. Now, actually, hold on. Let me try that again. Click the X there. Pick that. It's going to want me to pick the point already. So I'm going to hover my mouse in here over this face. Hold the control key and click that center coin. Now I'm going to hide the cap. Turn the body on. I'll turn up my origins so it doesn't get in the way. Hover my mouse right here. Control key there. Turn the cat back on so I can see it. And I'll hit animate again. It's a little tricky to see because there's not much moving here. But that is revolving around it. If you look at that little arrow right there, you can kind of see it on the graphics there. Click OK. Perfect. So that's moving around it. Now, the way we modeled this is this is supposed to be exposed. I did a joint with that cavity inside of there. So we'll fix it in more detail next week. But what we could do for now, right-click on this joint, edit joint. I'm going to drag the cap off so it's something like this. Click OK. And now you can see we've got a cap where we can turn the handle. Let's go back to our body. Activate. C for circle. Continue. Look at it from a left view. Let's add these lobes in. So they've got kind of a cutaway. We'll do that by hitting L for line. Click on this face. 
I'm going to sketch a line way up here. Notice how I've got that constraint here, which if we look at the list of constraints, it's hard to tell, but that's the horizontal vertical. I just want this to be a construction line. I don't want to use it in my model just as a reference. So click on it once and either click that or hit X on your keyboard. C for circle. I'm going to sketch a circle on it, which will make about, just get in the ballpark here, one eighth of an inch. D for dimension, 0.125. D for dimension, that point to there, we'll say 0.5. That yeah, looks actually pretty good. What I want to have is this little slot. Now I'll hit L for line. I'm going to click on a point on the circumference, hold down the shift key, and that's going to keep this line tangential to it. And I also want it to be horizontal or vertical. So when I let it go right there, it snaps to, come over, click, and then I'm just going to hold, uh, click a straight line down here. Now, see how it's starting to pick up other points in the model? That's going to create a parametric link to these other things. I don't want to do that here. I just want to sketch a vertical line and not have it auto apply a constraint. Hold down the control key and that absolves you of doing that. It also means it isn't going to snap to vertical. So we'll click something intentionally not vertical, like a position right here. Hit escape to fix that. I'm going to say perpendicular. I want this to be perpendicular to that. And tangent, I want this line to be tangent to the circle. Now I've got extra piece here, T for trim, click on it, boom. E for extrude, I'm going to click one, two, and I'll say half an inch, negative 0.5, that extrudes it there. Now I will do, is it modify? Create, create pattern, circular pattern. I want to do features. What's the feature? I'm actually not going to click anything up here, but rather look down here. What's my axis? If I click the circle or the circumference, it's going to automatically apply three by coincidence, which is what I want. Click OK. I've got those three cutaways. Now I could do are those things centered, though. They actually move. Well, again, we'll get into that in more detail next week, but I could quickly do C for circle right here, point, these things are pretty small, they're a little smaller rather than that slot, say point one just for to kicks, and I'll do E for extrude, and come down, same to, to distance, click OK, and we could do modify, we actually could do, ooh, let's see, can we do that? We could probably reorder that pattern. If I click both of these, hold down control to click both of these in the timeline, can I move them before the pattern? I can. So now take a look. We can edit this pattern. Right click, edit feature. And under objects, hold down the control key and also add to it that circle. And now we've kept the same pattern but added that circle to it. So that is our very rough intro to fusion demo on the tri mics come back next week we'll see how much further we can take this getting a little bit more detailed a little bit more thorough on the modeling thanks folks take care see you soon